On today's show, we sit down with Perry Hill, Seattle Mariners infield coach, and we're talking about the 6th F system that he developed that produced gold glove infielders. Welcome to another episode of the Baseball Awakening Podcast, where we dive into the raw, unfiltered, unsexy side of player development. Get ready for some knowledge bombs with your host, Jeff Rottmeyer. Welcome to the Baseball Waking Podcast. I'm Jeff Rottmeyer, and today I'm sitting here with Perry Hill, infield coach for the Seattle Mariners. Perry has spent 33 years in professional baseball. 24 of those years were at the big league level, where he specializes as an infield mastermind. Perry has coached Gold Glover at all four positions, first base, second base, shortstop, and third base, as well as leading three different teams to a league leading best infield percentage. The Miami Marlins in 2017, the Pittsburgh Pirates in 2009, and the Detroit Tigers in 1997. Perry was also named the Infield Coach of the Year by MLB Network. Players and coaches throughout professional baseball have high praise for Perry. Perry, good morning, sir. How are you? Just fine, Jeff. Thank you for having me. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you for coming on. You know, Perry, you developed a reputation of being one of the sharpest and best infield minds in all of professional baseball. But you also get a lot of praise for being just a great coach in general. So can we kind of start there? Let's just kind of start with, you know, you know, how you went about wanting to be a coach and, and then maybe your style a little bit. Well, number one, thanks for the compliment. I don't know about the great coach. But I did want to, uh, I did always want to, uh, to get into coaching. Uh, I like, I like the teaching aspect of it. I like the relationships that you build. I like, uh, seeing, uh, people improve and, and, uh, and, and, uh, climb the ladder, so to speak. Uh, it's really a gratifying, not only for me, but for the player to see how they, uh, how they, uh, practice and develop a skill and I take it into a major league game where it can make an impact. You know, I've always told my infielders that, uh, you know, a lot of times you'll, you'll go to the plate and the bases are loaded and you'll pop up or you'll strike out or, uh, and you'll be disappointed in yourself and you have to learn how to separate the offense and the defense. So when your attitude is when you go out into the field is not let the other guy get their hit. Uh, you know, the, that you have a thing called defensive RBIs. You can save runs just like you can knock them in. So, I think from the coaching standpoint, uh, your attitude has to be that, uh, you know, you can never, you, you can never get down and you can never get too, too high. You got to stay in the middle because uh, players can, can read into that and uh, it really can get into their psyche too. So my style of coaching is simply that um, I like to teach things in progression, step by step by step. Uh, I roll more ground balls probably than I hit. Uh, I want to make sure that I see everything I need to see fundamentally before I start whacking balls at them. Uh, and I think that uh, the player, uh, especially nowadays, uh, uh, really uh, tends to pick up skills when they see it rather than when they hear it. You can talk to some players all day long, and they may pick up one or two things, but if they see you do it, uh, I, think it's, uh, I think they pick it up a lot quicker. And I think that's uh, another style of uh, just, it's just not me. It's a lot of coaches is that you got to be able to demonstrate what you teach. Uh, If you can't demonstrate it yourself, there's a lot of guys that, like I said, that can, uh, some guys can pick it up verbally. Some guys can't. So you have to be able to, uh, to demonstrate what you want. So that's, you know, that's kind of my style. It's more hands-on building relationships going out at two o'clock in the afternoon where nobody's in the ballpark one-on-one just to make sure that you can get the, get your point across and your teaching tools across with no uh, outside disturbances. Very cool. So, so you have your website, which is called goldglovedefense.com where you lay out your six F system. Can, can you talk about that six F system and how it all came about? Well, it came about years and years and years ago. Um, simply because, uh, you know, I, when I was growing up and, and starting to play, I had, uh, like I said just a few minutes ago, I had a lot of coaches verbally tell me things <clears throat> without showing me. 
and it just got you know uh overwhelming like uh get you, keep your arm short get your elbow up get your hand on top of the ball get your hand up get your arm up and it goes whoa 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 there's so many things get down get your butt down bend your back uh but they didn't, never showed me how and they never taught me why they just t- told me those things and so uh i decided that once i got through playing that i was going to uh come up with a system that it was so easy to teach that one word would trigger all those thoughts. So once you explained what each F meant and demonstrated it, you don't have to go through all that, get your arm up, uh, bend over, get your back down, get your butt down. Uh, you don't have to do all that again. You just have to say one word. And that's when I came up with the success nice. uh, feet, field, funnel, footwork, fire, follow. Um, did you want me to break those down? Uh, that'd be great. Uh, well, you know, you always talk about, um, you know, being in motion when the ball's hit and right. uh, the ready position, the pre-pitch movement. You know, that's that's a lot of stuff to say. So my first word, my first step is feet. Feet's what take you to the ball. The quicker your feet are, the quicker you're going to get to the ball. So now it's like, it's, like, like an, it's like an outline, Jeff. It's Roman numeral number one would be feet. Now we'll go A, B, and C underneath feet. But once you explain the A, B, C, from then on, you know, feet's all you have to talk about. Watch your feet. Get your feet moving. Get your feet moving. Uh, it's the ready position. You have to be moving. you got to be on the balls of your feet when the ball gets in the hitting zone. And, and there's 19,000 different ways you can do this. Yeah. Uh, I leave this up to the player. I give them five or six examples. Uh, they can pick which one they like, which one suits them better. Uh, I don't want to make everybody a robot. So I let them pick and choose which one's better as long as they're on the balls of their feet when the ball's in a hitting zone. And the example I use all the time is a relay race. Uh, if you're running the four by four, uh, four by uh, 400 relay and you're in the Olympics and uh, somebody is running to hand you the baton and you wait till they hand you the baton before you start running, you're not going to be as quick as the guy who takes off running and hands and the other guy hands you the baton as you're running. Yeah. So it's the same thing in, in your foot in your number one feet is that you're going to be moving when the ball's about to be hit. So when the ball's hit, you're able to go left or right quicker. And it's just like that relay race that I uh, just uh, explained. Yeah. So that's Roman numeral number one. So from then on, you know, somebody has is not is he's not uh, getting ready. I see that he's flat footed when the ball's in the hitting zone. I just have to say when he comes in the dugout, I just remind him, hey, feet, get your feet moving. Speech what's going to take you to the ball. Get your feet moving. I don't have to sit down and say, hey, get your right foot, then come up, then separate your feet, make sure you're on the – I don't have to go through the whole explanation. It's nice. just a one-word trigger point, feet. Nice. Uh, the second F is field, and this is the one where the coaches say, uh, bend your back, get your butt down, get your hands out front. Whoa, you know, it's just a lot of stuff to remember. Yeah. So uh, once your feet take you to the ball, you're ready to field the ball. That's the second F, field. So now we go A, B, and C underneath field is if you get into a wide base, if you put your feet two to three inches past your shoulders, and it's going to be different for everybody, depends on how tall you are, two to three inches past your shoulder, automatically when you bend down, your butt's going to be down and your back's going to be flat. And your hands are automatically going to be out in front. And Hmm. the, the reason you want your hands out in front automatically is so you don't have any blind spots. You know, to be a good hitter, Jeff, you have to see two things at the same time. You have to see the ball and the bat. Right. If you don't see those two things at the same time, you're not going to hit. If you're going to be a good, consistent infielder, you have to see two things at the same time. You have to see the ball and your glove. Mm. So if you have narrow base with your feet and you're looking at the ball, but you look down in peripheral vision, you can't see your glove, you're going to have a blind spot about the last six or eight inches before the ball gets to you. So if that ball takes any kind of little bitty hop, you're not going to see it, so you can't react to it. So a lot of players and kids alike get a ball that hits them in the wrist or or the or the heel part of the glove, and they think it was a bad hop. That wasn't a bad hop. If you measure from the heel of your glove to the pocket of your glove, it's maybe two or three inches. Hmm. Uh, That's not a bad hop. The fact is you didn't catch it because you didn't see it. So uh, so my number two F is feel which means I want you to break down when you're going to field the ball into a wide base. Make sure your feet are two to three inches past your shoulders. 
automatically your ass will be down, your back will your back will be flat, and your hands will be out in front of your body where you can see the ball and the glove at the same time. So if that ball does take a little tricky hop at the end, you'll see it. You'll move your glove to react to it. Uh, so <clears throat> a lot of times an uh, infielder will come in, uh, or just maybe during a workout or a practice time, and the ball will come up and kick off his uh, heel of his glove. And then I'll, I'll just, just say, I'll just remind him. I'll say, field, field, wide base. And that's all I have to say. That triggers the memory, the success that he knows he needs to break down wider. Maybe his feet were too narrow where his hands weren't out in front of his body where he never saw that last hop. He's got to see that last hop or see that ball all the way into his uh, glove where he's got to be able to see the ball in the glove in the same view, peripheral, peripheral vision. Nice. So that's the field. Uh, the third F is funnel. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, once again, that'd be Roman numeral number three, for instance, and then we have A, B, and C underneath funnel. <clears throat> I like, once the ball is in my glove, I like to bring it to the middle of my body, preferably somewhere between my stomach and my chest, right in the middle of your body. And the reason I teach that, Jeff, is because if you look at every other sport, they throw whatever they throw from that position. For instance, if you hold your hands up and you're going to box, you're going to throw your punch from that position. You're not going to throw it from your belt, or you're not going to throw it from behind your body, or you're not going to throw it over from the side. You're not going to throw it on top by your head. You're going to throw it from somewhere about the end of your stomach to your breastbone, somewhere in that area is where you're going to hold your, and that's how you're going to punch. That's how you're going to throw your punch. A quarterback goes back to pass. They get the snap from the center. They hold the football in the same spot. As they go back to pass, uh, basketball, you throw the uh, pass from the chest. Uh, this is a lot of different sports. That's where the throw it, perfect throwing position is. And then you relate it to playing catch in the backyard. If you and I were playing catch in the backyard and I threw a ball to the left side of your body or to the right side of your body and you caught it, the first thing you would do is bring it right back to the middle of your body. Take your other hand, take the ball out of your glove and throw it back to me. You wouldn't take it to your waist. You wouldn't take it to your face. You wouldn't take it over on the side of the body. You bring it to the middle. So my point is, why would you do the same thing on a ground ball? Look yeah. at a pitcher. It doesn't matter if a pitcher is an overhand pitcher, a sidearm pitcher, a submarine pitcher. They always have their hands in the middle of their body before they break. And then they have a different arm slot or different arm angle from there. But they always get the ball to the middle of their body after they're wind up. Or if they're even not, not even a wind up guy, that's where they hold the ball. So that, that's the perfect throwing position. So for me, I like to get the ball to the middle of the body. As soon as I get it to the middle of the body, I separate my hands, thumbs down. And this is a big point for me. I remember when I was a, a small kid, I had a coach tell me one time, get my arm up. And so I put my arm straight up in the air and I tried to throw because he didn't tell me or he didn't explain or he didn't demonstrate to me what he meant. Yeah. He just said, get your arm up, which means he just probably read it in the book somewhere yeah. and said, get your arm up and expected me as a 12 year old to know what he meant. Nice. I had no idea what he meant. So that's another uh, reason I developed the success. Nice. So anyway, back to the funnel. So when I funnel the ball to the middle of my body and I separate thumbs down, there's four things that you have to do to throw the ball consistently straight that happen automatically. So I never have to say, get your arm short, get your elbow up, get your hand on top of the ball. Uh, I don't have to say any of that. All I have to say is funnel thumbs down. If you funnel the ball to the middle of your body and separate your hands thumbs down, it does four things for you automatically, Jeff. Number one, it gives you a firm front side to throw against. So if you funnel the ball and your glove hands, your left hand, if you funnel the ball and you take and you separate your hands thumbs down, even your glove hand goes thumbs down, there is your front side. If you look at every pitcher that throws the ball, they have a front side. It clears when they throw the ball automatically. It gets out of the way, but you have to have that arm up there to have a firm front side to be a good, consistent thrower. Yep. The other three things it does is when you funnel and you separate thumbs down, it automatically makes your arm short. We as infielders don't have time to take the ball down and up and around like a pitcher or an outfielder. A pitcher wants to do that because he wants to create arm speed because he's trying to throw the ball by you or create a different angle on a curveball, a slider, or, or whatever pitch. An outfielder has to get down and back up because he throws the ball uh, further than we do as infielders. Mm-hmm. He's working with usually 180 feet. He's throwing out runners from first to third or from second to home, which is 180 feet. We as infielders can have a long arm. 
by the time the ground ball gets to us, it's 90 feet from first base, uh, from home plate to first base. By the time the ball gets to us, they're 15 to 20 feet out of the box anyway. So we're, we're working on 70 feet. We yeah. can't have a big, long arm action. So by funneling the ball to the middle of your body, separating thumbs down, automatically you'll see your arm stops where it's short. It never gets long. Uh, the other thing it does, it keeps your elbow up even with your shoulder. It keeps you from getting underneath the ball or on the side of the ball. That's when people say, get your arm up. What they mean is they want your elbow, your throwing elbow, to be the same height as your shoulder. That prevents you from getting on the side of the ball or underneath the ball. And when that happens, as you well know, Jeff, your ball's going to tail or sink. Right. So by funneling to the middle of your body, separating thumbs down, it keeps your arm short and your elbow up. Now, and I'll, the other thing it does, the last thing, the fourth thing is it keeps your hand on top of the ball. And you want your hand on top of the ball for one main reason. As when you get to the release point, your hand, your fingers, and your hand is always behind the ball. Always. So when you're behind something, that's when you get your power. Yeah. Uh, if, if, if I had a big 500-pound uh, uh, barbell laying across my chest, I, maybe I couldn't push it up. But you put that same barbell and let me stand behind it, I can probably push it because I have leverage because I'm behind it. I'm stronger when I'm behind anything. Uh, so it's important that when you take your when you when you funnel and thumbs down, the reason the thumbs down that part of it is it automatically puts your hand on top of the ball. So when you go through your throwing motion, your hand's always on the side. If you go back and you funnel and you take your thumbs and you, it doesn't you, you take your thumb wherever you want to take it up in the air or on the side. Number one, your elbow is going to be low and your hands going to be on the side of the ball. And those are the two things that are going to cause your ball to move. Huh. We as infielders don't want our ball to move. We want our ball to be straight. That's something maybe a pitcher might do because yeah. he wants the ball to move, dart, sink, curve, whatever. We want the ball to go straight. So once again, so funnel, instead of saying all of that stuff, what I just said, once I demonstrate it and once I tell you the reasons, now my trigger point from now on is all I have to do is say funnel thumbs down, funnel thumbs down. Nice. If I see an infielder that catches the ball and takes the ball straight down and it's down there by his leg, that's too long. I can tell him funnel thumbs down, funnel thumbs down. It'll remind him, it'll tell him and remind him, keep my arm short. Automatically, my elbow will be the same height as my shoulder. Automatically, my hand will be on top of the ball, and automatically, I'll have a front side to throw against. So the third F is funnel. Nice. Uh, the, the fourth F is footwork. Uh, I won't get into, like, all the different kinds of footwork. I'll tell you just the, the part that I teach, uh, yep. just to uh, speed this up a little bit. Yep. Is, uh, I, I teach, if you're a right-handed thrower, uh, once you funnel and separate the ball, and now your feet are moving. I, I teach what I call the replace footwork. So if you're a right-handed thrower, once you funnel and your thumbs down, your feet start to move, your right foot goes where your left foot is, and your left foot goes to your target. If you're a left-handed thrower, it'd just be just the opposite. As you funnel thumbs down, it'd be your left foot to your right foot and your right foot to, at your target. So they both move at the same time, and that creates the two Ds, distance and direction. You have to get You have to shorten your distance to your target and you have to get your left shoulder pointed at your target to ensure that your ball goes where you want it to go. So if you replace your feet with that formula, right to left, left to target, or if you're left-handed, left to right, right to target, you're always getting the two Ds distance and direction uh, at the same time. The guys who cross their feet before they throw, they don't get both Ds at the same time. They may get one of them, but they don't get both of them. And like I said earlier, once that ground ball's hit and it gets to us, we got about 70 feet to work with. If you don't get the two Ds at the same time, every play for you is going to be bang, bang, or guys are going to beat, beat, out, uh, beat out the play. Hmm. You've got to get the two Ds at the same time. So once again, the formula is right to left, left to your target. If you're a left-handed thrower, it's left to right, right to your target. And both feet move at the same time. Uh, so the fifth F is fire. Uh, when I was developing the six F's, I could say yeah, I was going to have five F's and a T that just didn't sound right. That wasn't catchy enough for me, yeah. but fire is throw. Now we're ready to throw the ball. All this stuff has worked where we've got our feet moving to get to the ball. We're fielding the ball in a wide base. 
We funnel the ball because we're in the perfect throwing position. Our perfect footwork gives us distance and direction. Now we're ready to fire the ball. And when we fire the ball, we got a really good chance now. If we do all those previous four Fs, this ball is going to be straight as a string right at our target. So now we're going to fire the ball. The sixth F is follow. Once we fire the ball, when, when we feel the ball release out of our hand, we want to take one or two more steps toward our target. That ensures that our, our arm goes all the way through like a pitcher's follow through. It goes all the way through, and this increases your carry on the ball, and it increases your accuracy. And, Jeff, it also eliminates the recoil. We'll have some yeah. guys that get right to where they release the ball, and then their arm snaps back. Yeah. Uh, that way you're not finishing your throw. You leave a lot of balls up. Uh, you don't finish it. Sometimes a ball will tail. And the other thing is it's just hard on your arm. Yeah. You know, it's put stress on your elbow and your shoulder. So uh, the sixth F is follow. And the ABC underneath that is you want to have, it gives you carry. It gives you accuracy. And it eliminates or eliminates the possibility of you, of you recoiling. So once again, now, the six S are feet, field, funnel, footwork, fire, follow. And once you demonstrate this and once you walk through it with the player in a progression type, what I just did there in about 15 minutes, now it's a one word trigger point. Nice. All you have to do is say one word. Nice. And uh, instead of saying a, a bunch of long uh, stuff, because once the game's going on or once you have practice time, you know, you really don't have a lot of time to sit there and just explain the things over and over and over and over again. Uh, so I like to use the success because it has a one word trigger point that, uh, that keys that those fundamentals in the player's mind, and then they can reproduce the skill. Very cool. So I, so I know you're kind of pressing on time. So a couple more things if I could, when, when you're in the ready position, what are your eyes doing? You know, what are you looking at? And, and you mentioned a couple of times the ball into the hitting zone. Can you kind of elaborate what you mean on the ball in the hitting zone for the people that are listening? Yeah, so a lot of times you'll find players that, that the coaches will say, and I've had coaches come to me and say, you know, I got this certain player that he's late. It seems like he's always a step late going to the ball. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, what I think my first thing I, I ask that player is what they're looking at. And sometimes a player will follow the ball out of the pitcher's hands and they'll follow the ball with their eyes all the way to the plate. Well, you're going to be late because your head's always moving. Your head's moving. You're trying to track the ball and you're always going to be a tad late. Uh, what you want to do is you want to figure out, you want to focus in on a, on a spot right in front of home plate, uh, you know, about a foot or so in front of home plate, because that's where the, where the bat meets the ball is going to be usually out in front there. And so you're going to focus right there. So as the pitcher starts his wind up and his move and you bend your back and you do your ready position, however you choose to do it to get on the balls of your feet, you want the balls of your feet to land, but your head is looking still right in front of home plate, a few inches or so in front of home plate. That's where the ball is going to be, make contact with the bat. And you're going to be able to see it, make contact and read it a lot quicker than the, than the player who watches the ball out of the pitcher's hand and all the way to the home plate. He's going to be a tad late than the guy who focuses in on the front of home plate. Very, very cool. And, then, and one last thing: what a uh, what 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 should be a good what's a good mindset? What when a guy is sitting there ready to feel? What should be going? What should they be thinking about or not thinking about? Well, if you want to be a good infielder, you're going to be thinking about hit the ball to me. Yes. I want the ball. Hit hit it to me. If you got one of those uh, infielders that they don't want the ball. Uh, they're not going to be a very good, consistent infielder. You got to want every ball hit to you. That's your mindset. Hit it to me because you're out. Uh, you better hit it somewhere else. Don't hit it to me. If you hit it to me, you're out. In your mind, you're thinking, hit me the ball. I want the ball hit to me. Bases loaded, two outs, hit the ball to me. I know I'm going to make this play. You're not going to score. So your mindset has to be that you're going to make every play and you're going to make it every time no matter what the situation is, and you want the ball hit to you. Awesome. Well, Perry, uh, you, <laughs> you gave us a lot of <laughs> just awesome information here in a short amount of time, so I really appreciate uh, you coming on and, and, and firing it away. Okay, Jeff, my pleasure. Thank you very much for having me.